All right, y'all. Y'all know what it is. What time is it? Well, I think it's time for the Big Mo Show, <laughs> baby. It's time to get the living new quiver. It's time to get it up like seven up. It is time to keep it real with the sex appeal. We here in Baltimore. With a good friend of mine, Miss Arlene. And all we gonna do, all we gonna say, I got to get it, I got to have it. It's time. The Big Mo Show, y'all. <laughs>
your man. Beauty. Oh shit, I can't get my connection. Now you don't want to load. All this time you've been loading. You don't want to load right now. Really? Really? That's how we going Beauty and the Beast? Shit, I got your polar. I can't watch the damn Beauty and the Beast. All right, y'all. We're here. I'm Big Mo from the Big Mo Show. Here with a good friend of mine, Miss Arlene. And uh, tell the people what is about you. What can we expect? You, uh, we know you do a lot. Mm -hmm. Also, you run a radio station. Well, I don't run it. I just work at it. Yeah, <laughs> well, you work at a radio station. And uh, we know you graduated from college. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yes. And uh, I don't see any hood in you, but 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 you know, every black is there. But we want to know more because domestic violence is serious. Yes. I talk about it when I had a radio station. I talk about it because me personally, mm -hmm. I was raised that no man should ever touch a woman you know no matter what she do what she do right. it's, it's a way to tame a woman because we physically stronger than y'all right. that's a way to tame a woman and I, I just don't condone it and I think that a lot of domestic violence right now is from social media and rap music okay. because of rap music they're teaching these cats and a lot of um Help me out so I'm not false preaching. But I feel like a lot of young black mothers are raising their sons and children, and they have the mentality if a bitch hits you, hit that bitch back. Right. And that's where it's starting from. But go ahead. I don't want to take too much time. You talk, you tell me. Well, I think the thing, first of all, we have to look at domestic violence as a subject that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Um, I grew up, I'm sure you've heard it before, what goes on in your house stays in your house. Mm -hmm. Nobody's supposed to know anything that goes on, but you have too many people that have been subject to abuse from a relative, someone close that they know, someone that they've had intimacy with, um, maybe just someone they met on the street and just turned down uh, because they, they weren't interested. We've seen a lot of that lately. Um, men getting upset because a woman turns down their advances. So mm -hmm. next thing you know, she's either in the hospital or she's dead. Um, I think the other thing we need to look at is the fact that domestic violence is not just, even though women are the majority, men suffer domestic violence as well, as do children, as do, believe it or not, household pets. Household pets, domestic hated pets even come into the domestic violence picture mm. because if you find someone that is constantly abusing or maiming or harming pets, there's something going on at home mm -hmm. that needs to be addressed as well. Um, when I say men are abused, men are uh, emasculated, belittled, um, harmed, okay? You're talking sodomy, you're talking, you know, um, rape. You know, you've seen the movie uh, boss, Bosses, um, Horrible Bosses. That's where they kind of turned the tables and there was a female boss in there who took advantage of her male employees mm. at the dentist office. Demi Moore did a movie about being with the, the female in charge and sexually abusing her male counterparts. So it's there. The thing of it is, is that it's not talked about. And the way society puts it out is that uh, domestic violence is just a black eye and fat lip. And it's more than that. It's, it's uh, financial. It's mental, it's spiritual, it's emotional, it's verbal, okay? There's many levels of domestic violence that is only portrayed so many ways in society that when people hear or see the other ways, they can't believe it's true. The other thing we also have to look at the fact is that even law enforcement is subject to domestic violence because you have police officers that are losing their lives in domestic violence situations. Even though we, people are like, oh, I hate the cops. Well, it's not really about hating the cops. Police officers go two or more deep to domestic violence situations now because of the level of violence that can happen when they get to the scene. 
Uh, it could be anything from gunplay to knife play to weaponry. You have children that are witnessing their parents being killed right in front of them. It's a myriad of things that can go on when it comes to domestic violence. And we need to be as vocal about it as we are about breast cancer, as we are about autism, as we are about lupus, and many of the other things that are just as important. But domestic violence is looked at now like a, uh, how did our current administration put it, a pre-existing condition. Like you are pre, you are subject to it if you are in this state. I didn't, I didn't ask to be abused. At, in my 20s or 30s, I didn't ask for that. That's not preconditioned. It's just you go through a period of you want that love, you want that attention, you want these things so much, and when it, it turns tail and goes the other direction, you don't know how to get out of it. And that's the problem with domestic violence, and that's why I run and host the event that I do every year called 50 Shades of Blue, Stories of Domestic Violence Survivors, where I bring survivors in for people to see the real face of domestic violence. To look at these 13 speakers, you would never know what they've been through until they open their mouth. And that's what's important. Um, we have one lady who her, her abuser shot her, put her in a wheelchair. Mm. We have another who she's, she's dealing with lupus on top of dealing with uh, domestic violence. Another who dealt with breast cancer on top of dealing with domestic violence. Um, those who've experienced rape, sodomy, um, uh, kidnapping situation, hostage situation. I mean, any, you, you name it, it's happened. And that's why I've, I've even had one, my first male that came forward and described his domestic violence situation. So don't always think it's the men doing it. Women, some of them women can hold their own and be just as just as um, uh, threatening and, and degrading as men can. So you have narcissism, sociopaths, uh, psychopaths, any of those other things that that know me that important, and even with mental stability, mm. different things that come into that. It was a lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot that deals with it. So, um, you know, I talk about my story in a couple of my books where I went through. My abuse wasn't as prevalent as some of the others. Um, I did experience physical abuse. I experienced the the verbal, the mental taking my self-esteem down to the point where all I wanted to do is just sleep. I didn't even think about it as a suicide attempt, but it was because I took all of the pills that I would normally take for headaches. Mm. All I wanted to do was sleep, and I knew this pill would allow me to sleep and not have to deal with that. Um, sleep meaning you wanted to die? I, no, I just wanted to go to sleep. But when I reflect back on it, I wanted to be completely out of the situation, so it was a suicide attempt. Mm. I just didn't call it that. Um, so in going through that and looking at it, I mean, I had to deal with, um, my youngest wasn't here at the time, but you know, my two older kids having to sign temporary custody of them over to my mother so I could get myself back together, get myself together, going through stalking, um, being afraid to walk around a corner, go and, and you know, be with other people. Trust had to be regained a lot. Um, you know, and I think that's the thing with a lot of domestic violence survivors, you have to go, Healing is not something where you can look at somebody and say, okay, you're out of it, you're done, you know, move on. You you have to rebuild yourself, your self-esteem, your trust issues, all of those have to be rebuilt uh, after going through whatever level of domestic violence that you've been through. Especially trust. Trust is a big factor in domestic violence issues. I got you. Well, what we're going to do is, y'all stay tuned. Y'all see it's getting juicy. <laughs> we're going to be right back. After this skit with Miss Arlene, aka Lady Boo. <laughs> That's the hood coming out of it. <laughs> Just got paid.
Body hunter, feeling right on the dance floor, looking fly. Ow, baby, girl, you're looking good. The cows on there making me tired. Then you got a zebra on your head. You just got all kind of animals. So what you cooking me for dinner? Where the hell you been at? You been out cheating? You been cheating with chocolate? Huh? Cause I know you ate some. Did you eat all the damn chocolate? Hmm? You ain't bring me no food. Stop you. See me eating the apple? Cutting this apple up. Why, why you just stand there saying nothing? Huh? You got a knife. So and the knife is down towards my my jammy. So you want it closer? No, I don't. No, I don't. So, where you been? You gonna poke me? I am. Where you been at? If I bleed, you're you going to get charged with murder. No, if you bleed, it better be my Hershey's coming out of you because that's the only reason why you ain't got my damn candy. So, again, you been cheating on me? No. You lying to me? No. Then... No. 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 What you got for me? Hmm? I'm hungry. So hungry. This apple ain't doing me but so much. Can we just make love? No. Mm -mm. Can I wash your feet? No. Mm -mm. Your, your makeup look good. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. I tried. I tried today. I mean, I don't know what's going on with your eyebrows, but... My eyebrows have always been like this. Since you've met me, they've always been like this. So don't, don't stop now. Anything else you got? Say nice to me. Can I just leave? We gonna eat this apple. Since you didn't bring nothing in here for me, we both get, get over here. Over. Thank you, thank you. I don't want no apple. You do want an apple. Mm -mm. You want an apple. I don't. Oh, 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 oh. Bite it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Did you bite it? Oh, yeah, I'm for it. 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 Don't come up in here empty-handed. Okay. You can leave. You can leave. All right, we're back. I'm looking black and juicy as always. And I'm here with my girl. Arlene. I, um, when I grew up, I, you know, a thing you were mentioning, if we got in trouble, when you come home, it started at the beginning of the block, and by the time you got home, everybody on the block knew it. You went through the gauntlet. And you probably went through grandma and grandpa before you got to mom and dad. And by the time you got to mom and dad, you were just through done and buying and never going to do it again. <laughs> but the the deal with children, and I will speak on, um, we're, I'm focusing on youth in 2018. Uh, teen violence, dating violence, teen domestic violence, it's all real. Music plays a part. Uh, TV plays a part. Media mm -hmm. plays a part. Social media plays a Social part. Media, because, big part. Uh, you know, it's being used as a platform bullying, um, uh, playing down somebody else because of the way they look or how they dress or what they do or don't have. So those things play in. I think uh, too many people nowadays are using the television and uh, material things to satiate their kids. In other words, who has the iPhone, who has the tennis shoes, who has the Gucci belt, who has this fly haircut or this thing, who has these things. That makes me better than you. They're not respecting themselves as people, as persons, and they're not respecting their surroundings. So when you have no self-respect, you're not going to respect what's around you. True. Um, some of these children are going through violence at home, and the only way they know how to deal with it is to take it out on somebody else. Okay? Right. And that's something that I've talked about in my books where, you know, people with those anger issues have that tendency to reflect that anger on somebody else. Sometimes the abused become the abuser. And they don't do it willingly, it just happens. And uh, once they discover that, um, that is when they have to learn how to deal with it. They, they, it's not 
a bad thing to seek help. It's not a bad thing to talk to someone, go to therapy, talk to your pastor, talk mm -hmm. to somebody. <laughs> okay, stop, you stop, um, what's the word I want? The way the music videos are nowadays. Mm -hmm. There's too many bare butts and there's too many bare chests. Um, we're, dis we're disrespecting. You don't like to see the chest? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> this you know it. You, don't you see can a bad chest. I don't want to see that. Not on a female, I don't. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying it's just too much. I want to get into these. Which one of these books you read? This is mine. This is yours. Yes, I have co-authored in all of them. All right, the so this 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 co-author. What does co-author mean? Which means I lent my story to these other books. And right, they are, so they these, are these, anthologies or compilations. These, oh shoot, you didn't use words, I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> now, this, these two books here, mm -hmm. you have these, what you what you said, are, are called They are, one is a compilation, and the other one is an anthology. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that word is. That just means they gathered a group of, of people who have gone through similar situations or like situations right. and put them all in a book together. Okay. All right, so these are now yours. Right. So that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about yours. Okay. Lady Blueprint. Right. Very good picture of you. Thank you. You can owe that photo to Classic Imagery out of Dallas, Texas. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah. All right, so what is this book speaking of? This book gives you a, a taste of my life, my right. childhood, my parents, my grandparents, what it was like through my eyes growing up. I even go into my, my domestic uh, violence story, what it was like. It's in, here. it's in there. I also put in there my story of forgiveness because I did lose my father to uh, colon cancer in 2010. And, and why was forgiveness? Like the forgiveness father? happened because I had been through, I, I spent my life being a people pleaser. And by that, I was making sure everybody else was happy except myself. Um, as long as everybody else was smiling and getting what they wanted, then life was good for me. Mm -hmm. um, I went through my domestic violence period, but I had not dealt with it. In other words, I did not own my part in domestic violence. And mm -hmm. by that, I mean, I was a victim. It wasn't my fault. I wanted everybody else to be, you know, the at fault. Um, I wanted people to listen to me. I wanted people to hear my story and make that person, you know, downbeat and berate that person, but I learned that um, in being a victim and not being at fault, I had to forgive who I was. And in that, I learned to forgive myself, to forgive others for the hurt that I thought they caused, um, and to let it go. That's the biggest thing, I had to let it go, and I have not looked back since 2010 in terms mm. of that. So, and everything's just been up ever since. So. And y'all heard it, mm -hmm. right here. Not only on the Big Mo Show, but the Arlene Show. <laughs> and I've seen something as we go into our break to let you know she ain't always sophisticated. Did I just catch an earring in your tongue? Um, maybe. Oh my <laughs> God. They always say the sophisticated ones you got to watch out for. We'll be awesome. right back <laughs> after this skit. Hitting is 
Yeah. Yeah. You want another way, and I'm in the back. That's a hit. And it don't seem like you're getting too much of that lately. Yeah, no. I'll be back. I got lotion. Sure. What? At least I got lotion. But you know what I mean? I was just like, big ass of it. He got my time. That was so nasty. Like I should just take this candy and whoop your ass, man, <gasps> just for just doing that stupid shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're always looking evil. You're evil looking. Are you smell all this chocolate? What? I don't know. But something about this chocolate don't taste good, though. Huh? Say some hot peppers in there? Oh, girl. <laughs> oh, hell no. It, it was silent, though, right? Don't touch me. Silent. Something like. What about this chocolate? Oh, fuck no. Let me get out of here. Quick here. Where are you yeah. going? We're on a date. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> oh. Sancho had a bit of an awkward start. My wife knows everything broke well. Lady Bhutan is up and on the pace. Rojo is off third. The wind up no fourth to the outside. And the lead is over the fifth. to laugh again. 